environmental determinism is a theory centered on the idea that the environment in which we live determines or causes our social development and can imply that some groups will progress in ways that seem superior and others less so due simply to physical geography like landforms, climate, and temperature. For much of history, thinkers have pondered why some societies develop differently from others. Famous Greek philosophers like Plato and his pupil Aristotle argued that climate was a pivot point by which the Greeks were able to thrust themselves to higher levels of development, whereas other groups could not. Likewise, other historians such as the Arabic historian Ibn Khaldun reasoned that the climate was related to racial differences as he explained in his book Makadima. Other philosophers attributed racial differences, that is, physical differences between individuals such as skin color, to environmental situations involving food and water they consumed as well as the color of the environment. In the 1800s, the need for raw materials and new markets led Europeans to exploit lesser developed civilizations in Africa and Asia. Ever heard of the scramble for Africa? Once again, rather than address the moral inconsistencies regarding imperialism, all Europeans jumped on the bandwagon and began to take over large chunks of land from indigenous people who could do nothing to stop them. Likewise, a justification was again required. Influential geographers and politicians like Thomas Jefferson and Frederick Radzel adhered to the idea that climate affected social progress and development. If people lived near tropics where there was more heat, things would happen more naturally and they didn't need to work as hard in order to survive. So, environmental determinists would have asserted that these people are lazy and laid back, not progressive go-getters like the Europeans, who are able to create industries and inventions that could enable them to live better lives, which were largely defined by the West. People who lived in higher latitudes were also seen to be less than those who lived in temperate mid-latitude regions where colonial European powers thrived. Environmental determinism provided a scientific justification for racism and also imperialism. Charles Darwin's research on natural selection served as a further scientific justification for the theory of environmental determinism. Applied to human development, the theory could mean that some groups were not as fit as others due to a myriad of reasons involving race, culture, religion, and other factors which was widely accepted by the West as having been caused by environmental factors. Thus, the combined theories of social Darwinism and environmental determinism made it not only justifiable, but in fact necessary for Europeans to exploit peoples of Africa and Asia. Because after all, who wouldn't want European goods and European culture in their lives? In the 1900s, despite the work of Ratzel's pupils Ellen Simple and Ellsworth Huntington, who expanded environmental determinism in the 1900s, contemporary geographers of the time began to question the mode of thought known as environmental determinism, saying that uh, there was no real scientific evidence in order to support this and that it was mainly centered on being a justification for imperialism and racism. Many influential geographers, including Carl Sauer, the cultural landscape guy, spearheaded this movement against environmental determinism, which we'll discuss in a later video. Still, despite being in decline, environmental determinism has not gone away. Jared Diamond wrote the book Guns, Germs, and Steel, in which he discusses the importance of environmental factors on development of powerful societies. Adolf Hitler, we all know who that crazy loon was, utilized racism and therefore environmental determinism to validate the takeover of lands neighboring Germany, and he used these forces to fuel nationalistic fervor. Even as recently as 10 years, the justification of the use of fossil fuels and the reluctance of American conservatives to acknowledge the realities of human-induced climate change could be seen as contemporary examples of environmental determinism in the same way as imperialism was in the 1800s. Lastly, it is impossible to ignore that our environment has an impact on how societies adapt. To understand this, simply look at the customs of groups living in different biomes across the earth. Could you reason that the Inuit of Northern Canada lives the way that they do because of choice or because of the ways that they have adapted to a super cold environment? While they are not destined to live without making choices to progress, the choices they make are subject to environment to a large extent. Environmental determinism has lost popularity of the last hundred years. We really don't like the notion that human beings are incapable of progressing past a set of walls solely determined by the environment. 
We like to think of ourselves as being able to overcome obstacles and barriers. Even still, you don't have to look very far to see the dominance of Western culture and the threat that it has on less dominant cultures all over the world. The far-reaching impact of the effects of the science of environmental determinism will be with us for years to come. I hope you found this video to be very helpful and informational. Don't forget to like and subscribe and leave your comments in the thoughts below. Thanks for watching.